So basically, this is just going to be an explanation of the code for the game. I have a few other games over here, but uh, we're just going to make uh, go off this uh, drawing game right now. And at first, this might look a little intimidating, because there's a lot of code and it doesn't really make sense. So um, I'll go through it line by line, and hopefully it'll make sense by the end of the video. So this first line, import Pygame. Pygame is basically a module, a Python module used to create games. And that's what we'll be using to create the game here, so I had to import that. Import random, I also use this to um, decide whether or not you're going to give a user of hints of what to do or not. But yeah, we'll get, I'll get to that later. Pygame.init. Um, this actually just initializes the Pygame, basically turns it on so that it works. Win dot equals pygame that displayed outside mode 500 by 500. So basically, this creates a window that's 500 by 500 pixels, and that's it. Pygame that displayed dot set caption drawing game. Basically, when uh, you run this game at the top, when it says like in an application, whatever it says, drawing game, that's the application name, even though it's really just a program. Next, I'm going to import this background. I'm going to save it as background, and I'm going to load it the image it's called bg.jpg which is right here and this is it and I saved it as background next we have a class called colors and by the way you should know at least some Python here but uh, you'll if you don't I'll try to make it as easy to understand as possible so basically this is just a class like a type of a type of object that so you can see here a type of object and I'm calling it a color And this init function turns it on, again, like over here. So we're going to turn it on, and then we're going to set all these variables to equal things. So we have this white, and this is the color code for white, black, color code for black, blue, green, all the way down. And uh, as you can see, I kind of have a couple of random ones down here. But you can actually just Google color picker on green, or Google on Bing or whatever, and it'll you can like find the color you want, and it'll give you the red, green, blue code for it. Next, I'm going to find an object called a circle, which is basically what the entire game is. You're just drawing circles. I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to set some variables. So the surface that we'll be drawing on will be the window, which we created over here. Black. Actually, I don't actually need that, but because uh, we have a, a whole colors available up there. But we have the x coordinate and the y coordinate, which are both 50, which will be where the circle will start out when it's drawn, and velocity is 1, which is how fast it moves. So like if I turn that 100, it will be darting all over the board. Next, I'm going to uh, define this thing that I can call on later. It's called draw circle. And basically, it tells Pygame to draw a circle on the, the surface, which is win, the color, which you have to input, and the coordinates, and then radius, which, oh yeah, radius is inputted as well. And then um, next I defined it print coordinates, which is pretty simple. I just didn't want to have to type it out. You just print x coordinate is this, and then you print the x coordinate, and then y coordinate is this, you print the y coordinate. Reset coordinates, you just uh, reset the coordinates back to 50, 50, which is their original starting point, but it will change as the program moves on. Reset screen, basically it calls on reset coordinates, so it will reset the coordinates. It'll fill everything with white. It'll make the entire surface white. It'll just go white over everything. And then it'll draw a circle at the, the color will be black, which we can go color black is zero, 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 and draw a circle radius, which I'll get to later. But basically that's just the radius because the draw circle takes a color and a radius. And that's all for the colors or the circle object. Next, I'm gonna define this thing called give hint. Basically, you print, use the arrow keys to move, just like explaining how to use the game. And see if there's a board, there are lots of cool keyboard shortcuts in this game. See if you can find them. And then I have this list here, true, false, false. And you could, if you wanted to decrease the chance that you can, you can add another false or you can reduce falses, but you'll see why. And the hint will be random.choice, yes. So it'll just, uh, the hint, would it'll choose one of these. So it'll be true, false, or false. And that's why if you add another false, it increase the chance of it 
not being it, or if you add another true or whatever. So if this is true, if you, if the hint is true, then you're going to randomly get a number, 1 through 4. If it's 1, we'll print this hit. If it's 2, we'll print this hit, 3, etc., etc. And if not, it'll just pass and won't do anything. Um, already used, I will get into this later. Give hint, basically, this is the start of the program, because right now we're just defining things. We actually haven't ran anything so far, really. So give hint will basically tell it, it'll just run that program up there, like a mini program basically. Run is equal to true, which I will explain in a second. Win.fill 25, 25, 25. Now I actually didn't have to do this, I could have just done win.fill colors.white. Oh wait, color.white. But um, if I did that, I would have to move my instance of colors up there before, because I haven't defined it yet. So basically, um, colors is like an attribute, and I'm going to set this thing called color, and it's going to have all the attributes of colors, which is this. And then I'm going to do the same thing with a circle. I'm going to call it a pencil, or pencil in this case, and um, it's going to be have all the attributes of the circle. Okay, draw a circle radius. I told you to get to that. Basically, this is like the pencil size or how big the circle is. So like if it's bigger radius then the circle will be bigger and it'll be drawing a bigger pencil if it's smaller it'll be smaller and that's why i can just change it here instead of having to go through every little thing and change it later so when i can just type in draw circle radius when i'm when i'm drawing a circle and then i can just change it up here and then it'll be it's a universal uh whatchamacallit universal whatever okay so while run i told you i'll tell you why run is true so basically while this is true it's going to keep checking for uh, things that your actions that you're doing like if you're pressing keys or whatever um pi game that time that delay basically that just delays it 10 milliseconds so it's not just uh checking like every instant so that just slows it down a little bit um i said already used false um this because right i said it false up here but sometimes this will become true when i'm at the end of the loop and it comes back in cycles so I always want to reset this to false, and I'll explain this in a second. Um, for event in pygame.get. So basically, we're going to see if you press the arrow key or the X key, which is the quit button. And if you did, run will be false, and it won't it won't be running anymore, and the program will end. And you can see at the end of this run loop, um, pygame got quit. So afterward, that just turns it off, basically, if you press the X key. Next, keys equals pygame.key.getPress. So every time you press a key, it'll be saved into a list here. And then we'll check what keys are in that list so we can figure out what to do. Now this already used button. Now um, earlier, that Z thing was actually like an entire accident because it would draw a white circle and then a black circle, white circle, black circle. And I, didn't, I was actually just trying to get it to draw white circles. But it was drawing black circles because it was checking, hey, okay, is there is the Z button pressed? Yes, it is. Okay. Is the down key pressed? Okay, then we'll move down in the down direction. And then it would it would end the if loop and it would move on to the else loop and say, hey, okay, it'll check if it'll say, okay, if there's a down button, which there was because it was in the same list, then it'll move. So it was drawing white, black, white, black button. And that was why I was getting that. So I had to choose already used to true. That means that it's already been used, basically. And if I were to just just let's see, if I were to just press left, it has to be. It can't already be used because then it'll just when I'm trying to draw just red, it'll draw red and black, and we don't want that. So that's what basically why I did that. And um, okay, so that's why it was off. At, it's always defaulted to false as soon as we go over the loop, and then this turned it on to true because we pressed the R key. Next, it would basically say if there's a left arrow key button in there, and it's not off the screen, then we're gonna we're gonna make the X coordinate a little bit less so that your circle will be displayed left more to the left, and then we will draw a new circle and we'll call it red. We'll, the color will be red because it's red. Basically, we did the same thing with right and up and down. And then we did the same thing for blue, L, because again, we'd have B keys used, O for orange, and G for green. Next, we have if it's C, which for is clear the board. 
30 dots actually that, that um, C stands for clear board. Okay, pencil dot reset screen, so it'll just reset the screen and the coordinates. And um, actually, I don't believe I needed this coordinates thing, but I'll just leave that there because I don't want to get an error later. Um, okay, now we check if it's one. If you get press the one key, if it does, it will reset the screen. Actually, yep, that's proof that we don't need this. And it will change this radius to um, a five, which is much smaller than it originally was. That's three times smaller than it originally was. If it's a two, it'll be a 10. If it's a three, it'll be 15, four will be 20, and five will be 25. So basically that changes the radius of the circle, which makes the circle bigger. Next is um, if it's Q, then first of all, we'll clear everything by filling it with white. And then we will blit, or we will display our background image at coordinate zero, zero, which basically puts our background image on the back. And then we'll reset coordinates, and we will draw our circle at our coordinates area. Okay. Now if it's B, if it's B, then it'll check if there's an R. Here, actually, let's add an else pass so we don't run into any errors. Okay, so if it's a B and you're pressing R, then you it will fill the background with red, it'll reset the coordinates and draw a circle at our coordinate, our resetted coordinates area. Same thing with blue, green, and orange. And then if it's if there, if you're just pressing B and nothing else, it'll just pass. Okay, Z. Actually, I deleted Z, so I won't even go over it. There's an entire accident, so I don't even need this anymore. So let's... You know what? I will cut this just in case I do actually need it. But So it's saved. Okay, if it's space, then already use is going to be true. Because we don't want it to be drawing our little gray circle and then our black circle. which is So that's, again, we don't want it to be doing all this. Okay, and then it'll check if it's left and it's not off the board. Then what it'll do, it'll draw a white circle at the previous spot, basically erases it, and then it'll up the, the coordinates and then print print the coordinates, which will display down here when you're running the program. It'll print the coordinates, which is really unnecessary, but I just think it's kind of cool. And then it'll draw the circle at the new coordinates, and it'll draw gray, so it'll appear like just like hovering over like an area. And then I have the same thing with right, up and down. And then finally, if you're just playing the left or right key, then it'll move to the left or to the right. Oh, and it's checking if it's not already used. Otherwise, because that'll mess up all our other effects. So that's just why it happened. And then we have to update our display, which actually makes everything go onto there. Like, like if we just print a black circle, it doesn't actually happen until we update the display. And then once the while loop is ended, which is when you press the X key, then the Pi game will quit and that will end the program. And this is actually a really fun program to just goof around with. Kind of looks a little intimidating at first, but it's really not that bad. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time.